Ah, it's an RB wax injector. Let's give it a review. Hey guys, a question I often get asked is which is best for metal casting, wax or resin? My answer is always the same. If it's a one-off piece, resin is probably easier and cheaper. If it's multiple pieces, wax wins every time. And probably right now, the majority of jewelers are still using wax. But that involves a silicon mold and, you've guessed it, a wax injector. Now I did a video on a simple DIY wax injector a while ago, and on small items, like the skulls I made using it, it's great. But on something more detailed, it's a lot of time and trouble. So when RB asked me to review their wax injector, I jumped at the chance. After reviewing their vacuum casting system, I expected good things. And I won't lie, I haven't been disappointed. Unobtrusive and compact, as you might expect from RB, it's made of sturdy stuff. Metal everywhere. All the necessary controls are clearly and easily accessible at the front of the machine or on the top. There's a large clear pressure gauge and a simple pull-pin release mechanism to let the pressure out. A couple of spins on these knobs release a thick metal lid that reveals an ample-sized wax chamber. Some injectors require the use of a noisy air compressor but this unit sensibly uses a simple to attach hand pump. A couple of easy pumps get the pressure to a required level surprisingly quickly. A few weeks back, someone wrote to me saying, like you, I'm an incurable vogger. I just have to have a go, especially when people tell me it can't be done. This had me howling with laughter and I thought it was worthy of a coin design. To print it, I turned to my frozen Sonic 4K. Now, if you saw that review a couple of weeks back, you'll know I tested it using standard Anycubic resin. Well, since then, I've had the opportunity to try the frozen 4K resin, which Frozen assured me would achieve even better results. So does it? Well, I think so. I know these rings are slightly different colours, but for me, the darker 4K resin has much greater depth and sharpness. I haven't tested it thoroughly yet, but I was keen to use it on this project. At only 30mm in diameter, the coin is quite small. The details stand proud of the surface by a little over half a millimetre, and yet look how prominent they are. I used a little wax to fill in the imperfections left by the removed supports. I designed and printed a simple mould box. PLA is generally better in these situations as it's stronger, but I thought I'd see how resin would stand up. I held the coin in place with a little positioning wax, which gripped well and produced a waterproof join. I then wrapped everything in a little tape to seal the edges. The mould making silicon is a two part affair. I've had success with this stuff which I found on Amazon. It's a simple 10 to 1 mix ratio with the emphasis on lots of mixing. Once fully mixed it gets poured into the mould box. The Arby casting system has a vacuum chamber which is ideal to extract all the trapped air. It was then just a case of waiting overnight for the silicon to set. The real skill in mould making is cutting the original free of the silicon. It's good practice to include plenty of zigzag cuts to help the silicon mesh back perfectly in place. And above all, don't cut away any silicon. Just ease your way to the model. That looks pretty good. 
I filed away the nozzle shape on the mould boxes and, as the silicon is floppy stuff, using the included witness marks, I placed it back in the mould box for support and again wrapped everything in tape. Now to test the mould. RB include these fixing points on their injectors. Pressure needs to be applied to this injection nozzle to release the wax, so fixing is an absolute must. To use these machines, you really need good quality injection wax, and I went with Freeman's Carvable Purple. These come in flakes which get added to the wax chamber. Each wax tends to have its own ideal working temperature, and Freeman's very kindly failed to include this critical information on their packaging. Plugged in and ready to go, the toggle switch clicks on with positivity and the temperature gauge lights up brightly. On this side of the Atlantic, these machines are preset at degrees Celsius, whilst in their native homeland, they're set to Fahrenheit. I needed to enter the temperature of my wax, so I held the set button down for three seconds, tapped the up arrow until I reached 79, and then hit the set button again. After a few seconds, the temperature was stored and the wax gradually grew hotter. I pumped the pressure up and waited. It really didn't take long at all to achieve the ideal temperature. I'd guess at maybe 15 minutes. In honesty, it felt so quick to me that I actually walked away and waited a few extra minutes. As this machine has never been used before, there's air trapped behind the nozzle. In such a situation, it's best to place a thick rag over the nozzle and press until you hear the bubbling air calm down. Then, it's go time. I'm not going to lie, it wasn't pretty. I've never used a wax injector before, and things didn't go too well at first. I found that I was repeatedly pumping up the pressure, failing to produce quality waxes and generally feeling pretty disappointed. But within half an hour of repeated attempts, I found my technique. Slowly I pushed the mould towards the nozzle, keeping it level and true. I held it firmly for a count of three and slowly pulled away. Now my technique might not be textbook and I doubt professional onlookers will praise my method, but for me, it worked. And amazingly, I began to produce consistently good wax patterns. What truly fascinated me was that as I found my zone, I noticed the pressure was no longer dropping. I forgot all about pumping the handle and the needle didn't seem to fall. And soon I had enough samples to have a quick go at casting. So I simply turned off the wax injector until next time and released the air pressure. I'd forgotten how much fun lost wax casting can be. The results are excellent. Sure, there's a couple of imperfections here, but every professional will tell you it's normal to tidy up the waxes before casting. And to be honest, I didn't really do that. But next time, I think I will. One of these coins is spoken for, but if there's anyone out there that fancies themselves as a vulgar, 
or who wants to buy one of the first three castings I made using the Sonic 4K and the RB Wax Injector, I'll place two of these on my Etsy store. So, the RB Wax Injector. What do I think? Well, after a very short time, I was able to use it with complete confidence, producing consistently good waxes. So if it will do that for me, it could work wonders for other folk. The hand pump initially had me worried, as I felt a compressor might be more suitable. But once I got to grips with the technique, no pressure was wasted and it became very frugal. For small businesses or amateurs like myself, this injector will serve very well. But if you're producing a lot of waxes every hour, then maybe something bigger would be better. And this unit isn't big, though for me, it's just the right size. It doesn't take up too much space on the workbench, and its compact design means I can squeeze it between other equipment with ease. It's typically RB in its construction, strong, durable, and robust. It's virtually silent in use, with no odors that I could detect. The controls are simple, Nothing is complicated, but despite my amateurish and ignorant use, it produced very good results. I think I'm going to need to think carefully about doing more lost wax work. So, in a nutshell, if you're a small business or a dedicated amateur, you'll not regret buying this machine. It will serve you well. And there you have it guys, a finished video and one I hope you enjoyed. So take care guys, and thanks for watching.